Good day everyone and uh, we are once again back together uh, to look at physical science as we've been continuing uh, looking at the November 2020 paper. Uh, yeah, so if you haven't subscribed, please uh, be part of the family. And if uh, you've just joined the channel, hey, where have you been? Hey, uh, we've been learning quite a lot already. And uh, today I'm just going to be continuing as we have, um, starting with uh, question four uh, from the November 2020 paper, the DBE exam. Um, of course, I know that you've been working hard trying to obtain those good results. And I'll definitely try my best to be your plug as we continue learning together. All right, so we're looking at momentum today. Um, but uh, before I get uh, through with the question, uh, for those of you who need assistance with mathematics or physical science, uh, you're more than welcome to just send us an email. And our email address is info at mlungesingosi.co.za. All right, now let's begin. Right, so they've given us question four. We've got ball P and of mass uh, 0 0.16. Okay, that is moving to... Uh, uh, moving east rather at uh, speed of 10 meters per second that collides head on okay with another ball q there of 0 0.2 kilograms moving west okay so there are the uh, two balls moving in different directions okay so they're telling us that uh, they collide with each other and after the collision uh, ball p moves to the west of course the picture does uh, say a thousand words uh, which it feels like so they say ignore the effects of friction and rotational effects of the ball. Now, obviously, we're going to look at uh, the principles of conservation of linear momentum here, right? And um, remember the, the principle, okay, they say uh, uh, define the term momentum in words. Um, now, first of all, momentum is the product of a body's mass and its velocity, right? And you must keep in mind that momentum is a vector quantity. So we must actually, uh, you know, quantify it in terms of its magnitude and direction. So um, if you look at uh, conservation of linear momentum, however, it simply states in an isolated system, the total linear momentum is conserved, okay? Or you can say momentum before collision equals momentum after a collision. Now let's look at the, uh, um, you know, the question. They say calculate the velocity of ball Q after collision. Now, the first thing that you, you, you ought to do whenever you take a question on momentum, please always get into the habit of choosing a positive direction. So in this case, I'm just going to say, all right, uh, let's, let's assume that uh, direction going to the right, let's say, okay. Um, let's say that's going to be a positive direction, that, which means direction to the east is positive. Okay. So that means that the uh, velocity of ball P will be uh, 10 meters per second, positive 10 meters per second. And of course, to the west will be a negative 15, right? So now we're going to say, well, the sum of momentum. Okay, so we're answering 4.2.1. Okay, we're going to say the sum of momentum before collision, or you can say initial, okay, is equal to the sum of their momentum momentas rather after collision okay so i've got ball p and q so it's going to be the momentum of ball p uh, p there plus the momentum of ball q okay and afterwards we've got momentum of ball p plus momentum of q right so so that we know what to, which one we're working with okay so the mass of ball p we're given that as 0 0.16 and please remember mass times velocity so the velocity was 10 meters per second but remember we said we're going to take a positive there All right maybe let me just indicate plus the momentum of q before collision remember the mass was 0 0.2 the mass is 0 0.2 there okay uh, times negative 15 because this was going uh, uh, in a westerly direction so in this case, uh, um, after collision, however, ball P is now with mass 0 0.16 is now moving at negative 5 meters per second. And what we want to find out is the uh, velocity of ball Q, right? So the mass of Q is 0 0.2 and we want to find out the velocity of Q uh, final. Okay, right. Now, 
of course all that we're going to do is some mathematical gymnastics okay we find that uh, uh, sum there okay and obviously we're going to find the final answer all right and uh, as i work it out i find a velocity okay you can work it out on your own of minus three meters per second okay and obviously what that means is that uh, the velocity uh, should be uh, the final velocity rather of ball q should be three meters per second okay and in which direction we said negative so it must be to the west okay right and uh, you can check it out and verify it for yourself and check if that is true all right so the next question um, they ask us now uh, to find the magnitude of the impulse of uh, on ball p right during the collision right so uh, let's look at the impulse what is impulse uh, by definition impulse is simply the product of a force and the period over which that force acts on a body right but in this case we don't have the force and the period but we know that impulse or rather uh, you know uh, newton's second law uh, f net delta t is equals to delta p we call it the impulse momentum equation but it's actually an application of newton's second law so impulse can also be equal to the change in momentum so it's going to be the mass multiplied by the change in velocity um, right and remember we're looking at ball p there and remember ball p we said the mass was 0.16 okay and remember change in velocity so this is final velocity minus initial velocity so remember that the final velocity is the velocity after collision right so uh, for ball p okay after collision ball p was moving at five meters per second but remember we said that's the negative direction so that's minus five minus you know we are subtracting there the initial velocity and its initial velocity was positive 10 so minus a positive 10 that should be minus 10 okay so uh, our final answer there get a final answer of negative 2.4 kilograms meters per second okay so keep in mind that's mass that's velocity so that's kilogram meters per second uh, alternatively you can also uh, express that si unit as newton seconds right not newton per second but it's newton seconds all right and that is uh, our final answer all right if you note that uh, you would have scored yourself uh, a good a whopping 10 marks right and i hope that has been quite clear and straightforward and that's how the cookie crumbles right and i'll see you guys next time all right please don't forget to subscribe and please tell more people that hey we are learning uh, great physics okay see you guys next time shop shop